I started turning ornaments about uh, five or six years ago, and I liked the, a lot of the, uh, the style of the ornaments that I was turning, but I was never really comfortable with the stand that I was making to put them on. Uh, it was just a you know a plain you know f a flat piece of uh, material with a single uh, uh, rod up on it, and it didn't look very nice. So I was looking for something that was a little more uh, elegant, uh, a little more graceful, and I came up with uh, uh, an ornament like uh, a stand like this. And this is not actually my uh, 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 design. Uh, I, I came across a video by uh, a professional turner named Ashley Harwood. And she was turning uh, an ornament stand to go with ornaments similar to the ones that I was doing. So I kind of reverse engineered her video because she didn't give any uh, uh, instructions really on, on, on size, dimensions, and so forth with this. And came up with uh, uh, this stand and then uh, uh, started using scrap wood. Uh, this, by the way, was turned out of white ash. Uh, white ash that's dyed black, ebonized, and then finished. Uh, this is basically just scraps out of the scrap bin uh, that were glued together. And I uh, have the good fortune to have a good friend that uh, can supply me with an infinite amount of uh, uh, veneer. So I'm able to put veneer into the, into the pieces and come up with a, a stand that I think actually looks a little bit nicer than the ones that I was turning before. And I got some, you know, nice compliments on them, and they actually sold pretty well at craft shows this year. So, uh, uh, like I say, I had to reverse engineer uh, her video a little bit. And I'm, I'm prone to do a drawing and, and make plans for things that I think I'm going to repeat a lot of. So I did uh, a plan sheet that shows the layout for the, the uh, materials that I was using and some instructions on how to do it. I've got about 10 of these here if people want them. And I'll also post them in the file section on our Facebook page. Uh, these, uh, as I say, these are made out of scrap wood. And I glued up some blanks. The, the blanks are about 3 and a half or 3 and 5 eighths inches square and about a little more than two inches thick. This one happens to be like two and a quarter. And uh, the first thing I do with them is I find the center on them on both ends and put a tenon on both ends. And the reason that I do that is that uh, I, I drill one end out with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit uh, and put a lead weight in it. Uh, the lead weight, you know, comes from, you know, pick them up at Fleet Farm or, or any fishing supply. I use uh, the heaviest sinkers that they have. And then the other end, I drill a 3 seconds hole. And the 3 seconds hole is only about a half inch deep, but it's specifically designed to take a 3 seconds brazing rod. And for most of these, I cut the rod nine inches in length. Uh, it can be any length you want, so if you have a larger ornament, uh, you just extend the length of the rod and then bend it accordingly. But with a 3 seconds uh, hole drilled in, uh, the rod fits in pretty comfortably, and I just, uh, when I finish the ornament up, all I do is use some uh, uh, medium or thick CA glue to attach it, and it seems to stay pretty well. Once I've got the tenons done and the, uh, the holes drilled, uh, I cut uh, what are going to be waste pieces off anyway. And uh, oh, that's okay, no problem. Um, and I come up with a blank that looks something like this. And somebody uh, mentioned to me that I'm wasting an awful lot of wood. Well, yeah, you know, we waste a lot of wood when we're turning, but I, I don't throw these away. I keep them because I can make other stuff out of them. Uh, all I do is I take a piece of, you know, one inch stock or three quarter inch stock with some veneer and make a blank out of them that I can turn into uh, something like this. It's a toothpick holder. And this toothpick holder uh, was actually turned uh, from the leftovers from this, uh, uh, this ornament stand. So uh, those, the toothpick holders, by the way, sold for about 15 bucks a piece uh, at uh, craft shows this year. So, you know, I'm not really wasting that much wood. Uh, 
I'm going to go between centers here uh, in the chuck. And this is where the, uh, the shape comes from. I'm just going to use a, a half inch spindle gouge. Uh, about 1900. Uh, you know, this lathe is uh, the belt are set in the high range, so I could go up to 3000. But, you know, uh, I, turn as fast as you're comfortable turning. Don't take chances. But, you know, I feel like, you know, especially you've got interrupted cuts here uh, because, of the, the, you know, it starts out with, with square edges on it. And the faster you're going with interrupted cuts, the smoother your cut becomes. So Now the neck on these is kind of controlled by two things. Remember you've got uh, a 5 8 inch uh, hole drilled about 2 and 3 8 inches deep in this. And you've also got the uh, live center to contend with so you can only get it down you know, so fine. Uh, this one uh, with a smaller neck, I actually used a different uh, point in my live center so that I was able to get a little more clearance so that I you know, was able to turn a smaller neck on it. But um, I, I, I kind of chicken out sometimes on these because I never know for sure how close I am to going through this. And uh, if you go through this when you've got the hole drilled and you're running at 2,000 RPMs, it's kind of an un unpleasant surprise. Uh, And you can kind of see the design develop developing here. Uh, took a pretty good chunk out of it there. I'll have to get rid of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
this would be the point where I would uh, uh, do some sanding, uh, you know, smooth up my my, uh, my surface, and take out any remaining tool marks that I have. It's a little bit of a rough finish with the scraper. And somebody asked me, you know, if this was off center or how you do it. No, it's not. Uh, the, the next step in the process is over at the bandsaw. You know, that's what my piece looks like. And I've got to take off the tenon now. And this is kind of the, the point of no return. You're not going to do any more turning on it after this point. Everything after this is either done with the bandsaw or sanding. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off. I have a, a, a little jig that I made uh, that um, uh, it makes it easy to cut the bases off and get a nice straight cut. The reason I emphasize straight cut is that uh, you're cutting off the base, so you want it to be able to, to fit nice and flat. And uh, it also gives me a consistent degree. This is actually set at 20 degrees, which seems to be about the right uh, angle to cut the base at. I fit the uh, uh, the blank in here like so. But um, this is. Uh, uh, the ornament ready for sanding, or the, the base ready for sanding. And all I do is I go to a, 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 a belt sander, uh, or you could use uh, you know, a disc sander, whatever you've got available, and round this corner off and then flatten the base. And then the last thing that I do with it uh, is insert a, uh, a fishing weight into the bottom, and it drops in there. And then I fill it with shavings and pack in a little thick and quick glue. And that seals the ornament in. The thick and quick glue, by the way, dries very quickly, as the name implies. Uh, it's pretty thick glue, uh, and it actually fills this up pretty well. It's, it, it, it almost gets to the point that it's a, you know, a solid base. And then sand the base off, and I'm done. Uh, and if we were sanding and finishing, that would be our finished ornament stand. Any questions? How do you bend the wire? That's, that's, quite, that's kind of a challenge. Um, a paint can works pretty well. <laughs> for, a, for a bending jig. Basically anything you've got in the shop that you can get the bend started. And once you get the bend started so that you don't have any kinks in it, you just do it very gently until you get the shape that you want. And for the, uh, the, the hanger loop, a pair of needle nose pliers. It's one nice thing about the brazing rod. It actually bends pretty nice, but it's also pretty stable. Uh, you know, these things, that, you know, packing them to go to craft shows and stuff like that, they get beat around some. I haven't had any problem with any of them yet. And like I say, I just used basically a gallon paint can as a, as a form.